Hello and good morning. Ignore my face. I say this every single time. I was just watching a video. I'm gonna start talking about booktubers that I've been watching during the week because I don't really do shout out videos. Let me get more in frame here. I do talk about people a lot on Twitter, uh, which brings me to, oh my god. Okay, so YouTube, booktube, whatever, kind of blew up this week. And there is a thread on my Twitter page if you guys are looking for more diversity within the community. I'm not gonna go into what happened because it's not my place or my voice to like speak about it but i i do agree with the majority of the discussion that's happening so it, it focused around diversity in booktube it was focused around people of color content creators and if you guys are looking for more people of color content creators people that like the thread is just people talking about people of color content creators or talking about themselves and boosting themselves and I haven't subscribed to everybody because I only genuinely subscribe to people that I enjoy their content like I'm not just trying to subscribe to people because they're black or you know they're Mexican or whatever I want to subscribe to people that I genuinely love but my problem with YouTube is that I don't feel like they are spoken about enough. I don't feel like they're suggested to me enough. I don't feel like they get the same amount of exposure on the platform. And this is something that actually a lot of creators outside of booktube struggle with. This is a YouTube thing, unfortunately. Like, I follow a ton of black um, YouTubers outside of this community that are constantly speaking about struggles that they have with YouTube and with being you know, black and not getting the exposure or getting dinged for things that white YouTubers don't get dinged for. So it it is a real problem, but like I said, it's not my place to really speak about it in that way. Like, I'm not personally affected by that. I am a white YouTuber. My channel is doing well. I, I am doing well. And I get exposure and I get, you know, that. But if you're looking for more, there is a... It's pinned to my Twitter profile of everybody just talking about people of color, content creators, you know, just go through there, see if you can find someone that you genuinely enjoy that maybe you weren't seeing. But someone I recently found is Damien Terriquez. I'm probably saying his last name wrong. I am so sorry. But he does a lot of bookish stuff. He does fashion stuff. He does, he's recently been getting into more um, just discussion videos. And that's what I was just watching. And I actually really like it. So um, like for example, he did diversity on booktube, what e even is booktube or a booktuber, <clears throat> which I actually really, really loved that video. And then like, there's a designer luxury shoe collection, men and women's like, I just, I like, I don't know, I like his stuff. Um, but that's how I was watching today. But this is day one of the vlog. It is Tuesday. It is currently 10.32 in the morning. I am about to go back to bed. Not go like to sleep, but to go and lay down and just read because I've been trying to read. I tried to film yesterday. All my videos looked like shit. I was gonna film today, but I'm feeling extra lazy. So I'm going to get up tomorrow early and film so you guys won't notice a lull in videos this week. But I had so many comments from people that are like, I didn't realize how long a week was until you took a week off and like, please come back. And that made me really happy. So I am going to record videos for this week. Uh, just know that I was just having a bad week last week and I didn't want to record. And I, I mean, I, I kind of wanted to record, but I was just so down that it was physically impossible. If you guys saw the vlog from last week, you would not believe how many times I cut out just a video of me crying. I am just very emotional. So, today, what I'm going to do is show you guys the books that I'm going to bring into my bedroom with me um, to try to read today. Just read a little bit of each or, you know, just like gorge myself on one book. I don't know. Also, today's Kingdom of Ash release day or Kingdom of Ass release day as I'm calling it. Um, somebody, somebody called it Kingdom of Ass on Twitter and I was like, oh my god, it's so true. I need to know what happens, but the problem is that I don't think I'm going to be able to read it all before I see a spoiler because the book is 900 pages and people on the internet are assholes. So I'm going to show you guys, other than that book, the books that I'm currently reading. I have a giant stack, like I'm not joking, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine books. So the first book that I have here is a book that I am buddy reading with Dee. I will put her channel down below. I adore her. She has been away for a little while because of some life changes, but I'm hoping she comes back soon because I just, I genuinely love her. So we are reading Sock Hill Girls. Sock Hill Girls, so far from what I've gathered from it, is about these 
three women. It's a mother and their two daughters. The second eldest is actually the main character of our story. They move to a smaller town because her father is actually killed by a drunk driver. And they want to restart. They want a fresh start. And I like the dynamic between all the characters and I like the setting of it. It's very atmospheric and... I don't know, I just, I, so far I'm really liking it. I'm liking the island, I'm liking the characters, I'm liking the kind of story, but the story is apparently about girls that are lured away in this town and they're never seen again and no one knows kind of what's happening to them. And there's a girl within the town who is the daughter of the, I was gonna say like sheriff, but chief of police, I guess is what he's called. Um, and she loses a friend, but she kind of sees that what's happening is bullshit and why aren't people talking about it? So I'm really liking it so far. I am... Let's see how far into it I am. I'm 49 pages into it, and it's just really good. And apparently this is the author who wrote, okay, what was that book called? Fury, I think? Furyborn, something like that? Tennessee? I think that's what it, it's Claire Legrand. I think she wrote that book. Okay, the next book that I'm reading is Kill Creek. This is a book that I've tried to start a couple of times this week. I haven't even read a page of it. This is about a bunch of horror authors, like pillars of the horror community, that go to do this like publicity stunt and stay in a super haunted um, like cabin, I guess, in the woods. Uh, and the cabin actually ends up being haunted, so it kind of blows up in their face. But I've heard amazing things about this book, and Destiny actually sent this to me, and I'll leave Destiny's links down below. If you guys want in-depth reviews, if you guys just want like diverse, like diversity, and you, she just literally reads and reviews everything, and she reads and reviews things so well, like so well. Like I have strived recently to do reviews like her to the point where I have refused to do reviews so I can sit down and properly do one like Destiny does, but she sent me this as a gift, and I cry. I want to read it so bad because she read it and loved it. Um, the next book I have here is a book that I actually don't know anything about, but I've seen a lot of people talk about. It is The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. Um, it says, a propulsive heart palpitating novel of psychological suspense from the Bram Stoker award-winning author of A Head Full of Ghosts. So I don't really know a whole lot about this other than it says seven-year-old Wen and her parents Eric and Andrew are vacationing at a remote cabin on a quiet lake in northern New Hampshire. A handful of miles from the Canadian border, far from far removed from the bustle of city life, cut off from the urgent hum of cell phones and from the internet, they are more than two miles away from their closest neighbors in either direction along an old dirt logging road. Okay, apparently a man shows up. Um, three more strangers to a man and a man also show up. Uh, let's see. Oh. Oh. In a panic, Wen tells Leonard that she must go back inside the cabin, but before she goes, her new friend tells her, none of what's going to happen is your fault. You haven't done anything wrong, but the three of you will have to make some tough decisions. I wish with all my broken heart you didn't have to. Your dads don't want to let us in, Wen, but they have to. We need your help to save the world. Wow, okay, well, apparently it's an apocalyptic kind of book. I don't know, I've just seen it everywhere, and I know a lot of people who love this. Um, it's funny though, because Somebody who I really, really trust the reviews of, she did not like this book. She gave it like 2.5 stars. So we're gonna see if I like it or not. But I mean, I'm quick to DNF shit right now because I just, and I don't know if you noticed, but that's two library books because I've been borrowing books from the library as opposed to buying them right off the bat. So other than like new releases, like my pre-order new releases, I haven't really been purchasing anything. The next book that I am reading is Pet Cemetery, and I am still only on page, what page ma'am? 51 of Pet Cemetery. This is for our Constantly Reading Club. I should have finished this by the time you guys see this vlog or shortly after you guys see this vlog. I have been wanting to read this book for a really long time, and I kind of spoke about this in my last vlog. I am afraid that I'm going to fuck this up. I don't know why I'm so afraid, but I think because I have such a history with this book, I'm afraid I'm going to not like it or... It's just not gonna sit with me as much as it does other people because it is a cult favorite, like cult favorite. So we'll see, I don't know, I'm worried. Um, the next things that I have, I have volumes four through seven of Saga because I want to catch up. I own up to, th I think I have three, yeah, I have three but I haven't read anything past this and I really like Saga. I've heard it kind of slows down though, which is why I ended up just renting them from the library. They were available and I was like, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna get it. So I have four, five, six, and seven here and I really wanna read those. And obviously these will take like 10 minutes to read. The next thing I have is a bit different. It's like a, uh, I don't know. I think these like kids, 
go away. I hate when they do this. They cover up the description at the library. I know I looked it up. This is what it's called. It's called The Woods. It's by James Tynion the fourth? Fourth? I don't know, Greek numbers. Anyway, um, but this is like a horror kind of comic, apparently. It's like horror and apocalyptic at the same time. But it's about these kids, from what I know, that go camping or they go away in the woods for some reason. I don't know if they like just wake up in the woods. I don't know if they're like on a mission in the woods. I don't know anything about it, but I saw it at the library and it sounded kind of cool. And I actually really like the art style and I like the idea of people kind of trapped in the woods and I'll, I'll update you later on what it's actually about because I could be completely fucking wrong. But that is going to be it for today. That, well, not for today, but that's going to be it for my update for right now. I am going to go lay down. I might play a little bit of The Sims on my phone, put a movie on on the Xbox, and just read because I have not properly read in what feels like a year. Honestly, I feel like it's just been so long since I've sat down and read. But yeah, I have four days off this week and I need to film a bunch tomorrow because next week I work five days which totals about 57 hours for me so I need to get a bunch of reading done this week so reading and filming and all of that needs to take place this week but yes that is going to be it for this update I hope you guys enjoyed this video enjoy this video enjoy this update wow I'm trying to like close this out like it's own singular video I mean this update has been 13 minutes long so it could technically be its own video but it's not I love you guys. I will see you a little bit later when I have more of an update on what is actually happening on my corner of the world. Hello. Uh, welcome to my office. As if I am your boss. I moved my desk in front of my bookshelves to save space in front of my window so that my plants could have some light and that way my desk wasn't in the way and I just have my plants in that corner. But. We're here for some updates. I have some reading updates. Not much. I haven't read much. I've read like maybe 10 pages today. Um, so Kill Creek, I read the first five pages just to see if it's something that I was in the mood for right now, which I've been trying to do for a while, and it absolutely 100% is. Um, I read the prologue, which is about the house itself, and apparently it has been passed along to a lot of different people because no one has wanted to people have bought it but no one's been able to actually narrow down and keep the house for a long time other than two sisters and I guess two the sisters eventually when they buy the house um, one of them passes away when they're really old they're twin sisters and they have a man come in and kind of look at the house and he ends up writing a paranormal book about it but the origin story of the house is there was a couple that used to live there the man actually built the house himself and they are, I'm assuming, murdered one night because their bodies are found, he's found in the house and she's found murdered and hung from a tree outside. So it's really spooky so far and I'm really liking it. Apparently the house is like a doorway to something, they don't say what it is so far. The other book that I've read two chapters of is Kingdom of Ash. And by two chapters I mean just the very first like two pages, two or three pages, which is obviously told from Rowan's perspective. I had to set it down because I'm kind of being a bitter Betty today and I'm not in the best mood so I wanted to take a second to sit down before I tainted it for myself I guess you could say. So I had to set it down but it's because he says mate like three times in the first two pages and I was like not this shit like and I'm seeing a lot of coincidences between this series and the in the the storytelling itself between this and um what's the other one called the court of whatever court of thorns and roses but I'm still I'm still really excited to read it I'm gonna read it it's like 900 fucking pages I think it's actually more than 900 pages and the other book that I am reading is Sako Girls, and I'm on page 49. I have thoughts about this. This is a very atmospheric-like book. The only thing that I don't really like about it, or things that I do like about it. Okay, so I like the characters. I think the characters are really interesting. I think I already touched on that. Um, and I really like the atmosphere. I like the setting of the book. Um, I've been watching a show called Haven for the last couple of months, and I think you guys have heard me talk about it. I really love it. And the setting of this book kind of reminds me of that. So it's like a little bit supernatural. Now supernatural things, like multiple supernatural things don't happen in this town, but, or so far they don't. 
but there's still a supernatural thing that happens and that's why it kind of reminds me of the, the show a little bit. There was one point in this book that I was a little bit confused and it seemed like they were just setting the story up in a slightly too obvious way and it is when the chief of police lets our main character ride his horse and they're like talking for like two seconds and he's like hey you want to ride my horse and then the horse freaks out and takes off and she's thrown from it and she hits her head and she wakes up screaming and you know they're supposed to kind of like like the story is trying to build from there totally fine but the way it was set up it was just really weird so I didn't like that and that's like already happened in the first 50 pages it's like a kind of like a plot like a push for plot that I don't necessarily enjoy but yeah that's how I'm feeling about my reading I'm going to finish setting up my office like I said I moved my desk so where my shelves were that you guys have seen me filming in front of recently I put my desk in front of that and it'll actually work, work really well for taking pictures and like I said I have an area for my plants and stuff in front of the window because I did there's actually a window behind this shelf right here um, not this one but the one next to it. you guys can't really see it so I have four shelves um, uh, I have a window there but I covered it up like a dumbass so I need light for my plantus or they're gonna die so that's what I did but I uh, here on this wall right there is completely empty and I'm hanging up some pictures there that I've had for a really long time there's some holes in this wall I actually need to stucco which I'm going to try to do this week we live in a very old house we live in a very old neighborhood and I love old houses that's like our favorite we love old houses but it's things like that that are kind of annoying but yeah oh I'm tired apparently I am gonna do that what are you doing why is my show starting oh, no. no but yeah so I'm gonna do that and edit the videos that I filmed today but I will check in with you guys probably tomorrow evening probably yeah See you then. It is Wednesday. It is probably around about 11.30. We are in a location that I don't think we've ever been in. We are in my bed. I am not feeling very well emotionally today and I have decided that because of that I am going to be a burrito all day. So I have my coffee, um, my pumpkin spice coffee. I actually use a uh, silk almond creamer instead of normal pumpkin creamer and I think it tastes better. I think it tastes a little less artificial in a way, but I have my coffee, all my pillows, I have my blankets, I have my tablet somewhere so that I can watch YouTube videos in the background while I read, but the thing that I came here for, this is what I'm going to be reading today, Soft Kill Girls. I planned on reading a ton the last couple of days and I wasn't able to. Um, it's a bye week at work though, a, a bye week is when our football team isn't playing, there's no football. Uh, so I should be able to read a lot this weekend as well, but this is the book that I'm going to be trying to finish this afternoon. We will see if I am able to. I am, I think, on page 40-something. Yeah, 49. I sat down to read it last night, like you guys saw in the footage, and then got sucked into booktube videos and didn't get to read a damn thing. <laughs> so my goal is to try to finish this today. So I'll update you guys either when I've made a good chunk of this book or when I have finished it. So I will see you guys in however long it takes me to do that. book to prop you guys up so you might be sideways. Is that a cat here? Anyway, <clears throat> I said I was gonna update you guys when I read enough of this book to talk to you guys about it. This one right here, Sako Girls. I haven't read... Mm, I've read seven pages. Um, the last few days I've just been... Honestly, so I work so much next week that it's giving me anxiety 
and I have just been like every single time I think about it I've been like freezing and really panicking because three of those shifts I work by myself and I don't mind working by myself and I can handle it but if I have like a panic attack or any kind of anxiety and I feel like I need to leave or I need to take a minute um it just thinking about not being able to just go because there's another person there it kind of puts me on edge. So I've been stuck on that for the last couple of days. And so I have been playing video games. I had friends over yesterday um, on Thursday and <clears throat> I was up until three o'clock in the morning playing Elder Scrolls last night after they left. And I've just been trying to relax really. But I have been pretty high strung, pretty nervous, just really on edge. So I haven't been reading. But I only work Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of this week. I am actually at work early. I don't work till 3, but I'm actually here and it's 1 o'clock because I wanted to get out of my environment that I'd been in all week and come and sit in my car at work and read. So that is what I'm currently doing. That's where I am. I have three, no, I have four books with me today. Empire, not Empire of Storms, Kingdom of Ash is what is currently propping you guys up. And then I am also obviously reading Sawkill Hill Girls. I'm also buddy reading this with bow ties and books as well, Jesse. And they asked me if I wanted to buddy read it with them as well. So I'm also reading it with them and we're doing it. It's it's kind of nice because I am buddy reading it with two people. We have pretty lax um, like buddy read parameters. So it's nice that I don't have to feel rushed or anything like that. And they are, I think we're checking in at about 100 pages. The other book that I'm reading is Pet Cemetery. Obviously, I haven't read this. I am on page 51. I really want to just sit down and finish it because I just, I want to know what happens and I'm super intrigued, but I feel like my OCD right now is a little crazy. And then the other book that I'm currently obviously reading is Kill Creek. I am on page like 15 of this or something, um, but I am really liking this book. It's really fucked up, actually. I'm not going to lie, but it's pretty good. Um, Yeah. So far, I really like the writing style for it, and I haven't heard a single person that hasn't liked this, so I'm really excited to read that. I am just in the mood to not be super talkative and not really participate with a lot of things today. I just want to do my job and read and just try to make the next three days as relaxed as possible because I work about 36 hours. I'm scheduled 36 hours by the time I get here and leave. Um, it'll probably be about 40 hours that I work this week in those three days. So I'm trying to just take it as comfortably as possible. But yeah, that is going to be it for this update. I am going to sit here and read for a couple of hours. I might update you guys before I go into work. And if not, I will try to update you guys tonight. When I get home, I need to edit my video. I sat down to edit it and then I just, it was too much for me at the time. So I didn't finish it, but I don't have a set days that I'm posting anymore. I'm still trying to put up relatively three days a week and relatively Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but it does, it's not always going to be like that. And you guys agree that it's probably better that way anyway. But yeah, that's going to be it for this update. I will update you guys when I have more on the books that I'm reading. I think right now I'm going to read Sock Hill Girls because I'm really liking the atmosphere of it. The atmosphere is so cool. And I hear there's bi rep in it as well, which I can kind of guess which character that might be so far. But yeah, I'll update you guys in a little bit. and happy Sunday. Now, let me this out of the way. Now I know what you're thinking. Jess, you didn't update us yesterday, but I actually did. But here's the kicker. I did it 10 minutes before I had to go into work and my camera didn't record. So yeah, that was a great start to the day. But I thought today I would go over everything that I've read in the last couple of days. This vlog is gonna be all over the place. <clears throat> I don't even know if I'm actually going to upload it. I don't know the last thing that I told you guys I read, but 
I am on page 123 of Pet Cemetery. Things are starting to happen. This is, uh, spoilers if you guys haven't read the book, don't watch this till I put my hand down. But I'm at the part where their daughter's cat dies and Judd and the dad go and, I can't remember his name right now, go and bury the cat. And um, if you're not familiar with the story, where they, where they bury these animals, the animals or this burial ground beside the pet cemetery, kind of behind the pet cemetery, is kind of, I don't remember if it's Aztec or Indian or what, but essentially those animals can come back to life. And that's kind of what happens when they bury their cat. Um, the cat does come back to life. So it's really good. It's getting really, really good. Um, and then I am still reading Sako Girls. I'm going to finish this today. I'm on page 316 um, of like 400 and some. I am loving this book. I'm loving the different perspectives. Like, I love jumping between Zoe, Val, and what is the other girl's name? Marion. I can't even remember her. I always want to call her Marissa. I love the different perspectives. I love that they're written in different voices. Like, the, the type of voice that the, the chapters are written in are very different, and I really, really like that. And I didn't really recognize it until I was reading Val's chapters, but Jesse from Bowties and Books actually pointed it out to me, and I was like, wow, you're actually 100% right. And the more I read it, the more I can pick up on it. I mean, Zoe and Marion, their, their writing or their chapter styles are pretty similar, but it's still very, very interesting. The story is very interesting. It's starting to really, really, like, I want to know kind of what's happening. There's a lot that does happen in this. There's a lot of, like, points that you need, like, story plots that you need to kind of put together. And I'm excited to see how they kind of wrap it up at the end of this. And like I said, I'm going to try to finish that today. And then the other book, the, the chapter books that I'm currently reading, I am still reading Kill Creek. I'm on page 63. I'm going to get through a good chunk of this today. I'm actually really loving this. Um, once again, this is about a bunch of horror authors who are kind of thrown together in an effort. They're like paid by this crazy horror website to do this publicity stunt, essentially, with the website where they go and stay at Kill Creek, which is a severely haunted house. Um, it is apparently like a portal to hell, I'm assuming, kind of what you gather from the first parts of the chapters. And so far, the horror authors have all met each other, and it's actually really interesting because they're very different. One of them is like a pillar in the horror community. One of them is very mainstream. One of them is very like <clears throat> goosebumpsy kind of horror author. And then one is this crazy like indie author essentially, and she is a psychopath. Like she, at one point in the book, decides to stab somebody. She's a psycho. Um, and the other things that I'm currently reading, I got through a few comics yesterday. You follow me on Goodreads, you saw me update for all of these. Um, first one I finished was The Woods. This is really good. I actually requested two through eight from the library because I loved it that much. It's about a school in Wisconsin that's actually kind of like picked up and teleported to an alien world. And there's like Aztec temples there. There is like Russian writing. Um, so you don't really know what's going on other than they were teleported away from our planet to somewhere else. Really freaking cool though. Like really, really cool. And the other two things that I read were Saga Volume 4 and Volume 5. <clears throat> this does not cease to amaze me. Saga is recommended from a lot of people for a, for a very good reason. I think that it's it's very good. Now I'm only on five and I heard there's a little bit of a lull, but the people who are reading the most recent ones are really loving it. So I'm wondering when the lull is supposed to happen because I have six and seven here and I think nine, eight or nine just came out. So I'm wondering when the lull is going to happen, but I do have those, but these were really hard to read. There's a lot of sad stuff that happens in this. There's a lot of sex and violence and gore and all of that. And I think that's why I like this comic so much because it's so blunt. Um, I love the parents in this as well. I think that they're probably my favorite characters in comics ever, but I'm excited to see what happens, especially with the cliffhanger that volume five left on. It's a bit much, but that is all the books that I have read in the last 48 hours, I guess Friday and Saturday, since I tried to update you guys on Saturday and it didn't freaking work. I hope I have enough footage for this vlog, honestly. But yeah, that is going to be it for this. I need to go into work. I hope you guys had a good week when you guys see this. And I don't know if I'm going to update you guys again or not, but if I do, I will see you tonight or I will see you tomorrow morning. Hello. Good afternoon. It is 10.30 in the morning. I have already been awake. I went and got coffee. Um, but I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about what I have or what I read yesterday. So I finished Sock Hill Girls and you guys, I have never read such a beautiful book about really what it's like to be a girl, 
to be a girl that loves other girls, to be a girl that supports other girls, to be a girl that is just simply controlled and oppressed and treated like shit by men, but not in a fuck all men kind of way. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's good men in the story. There is ace rep, there is bisexual rep, there is, um, a, you know, a lesbian couple in the book. And it's just, it's, it was so good. And it was everything that I wanted in a book. My buddy read it with Jesse and my friend D. And I'll link both their channels down below. And then Rian and me and Jesse were talking about it last night on Twitter before my car decided that it didn't want to work anymore. Which, ugh, I just, I, I can't handle it. There's so much happening this week that my car cannot do this. It seems to be fine this morning, so I'm hoping it was just a battery issue. But the last weekend has been a really good reading weekend. It was nice to talk to new people like Jesse and I have never talked before. And they're delightful, by the way. Like, I absolutely love them already. But you know, just, it was just a good reading weekend. So I would say the highlight of what I read so far, or what I read last week, would definitely be Sock Hill Girls. And if you've been considering it, I think you should read it. I know there are some negative reviews, but honestly, just like the atmosphere, everything was just done really well. Um, but today, I'm gonna move my camera a little bit. Today I have an unboxing for you. I got a box that I wanted to try out. I just got like a one-time thing to see if other people would be interested in it. But this is what it looks like. It is Manga Spice Cafe, which is essentially a box that sends you a bunch of like snacks. Sometimes they're, you know, not just Japanese, but a bunch of different snacks. But they also send you three manga every single month. Um, always first release, like first edition releases, you know, so that you don't get, you don't double up on them. Um, but I wanted to show you guys what I got in it, and you can let me know if this is something that you're interested in, because I just wanted to try it, and... From peeking at it, I'm pretty impressed. But this is a little paper you get with it. It has a bunch about the art, um, like the artists and stuff that are working on the com or on the manga, and like the ingredients for the snacks and stuff, which is really important to me. I was actually worried that that would be something that I wouldn't like because I have allergies to like red dye and caffeine, and so I wanted to make sure that, or I was nervous that it would have snacks on it that I couldn't eat. But the first snack we got is, what are they called? Oh my god, Kui Kui Corn Snacks, I guess is what they're called. But they're just a bag of like corn snacks, which is fine with me. They look like they're little puffs. I don't know if these are like cheddar flavored or what. Let's see. Um, they're from Taiwan. Starts off with a crisp crunch in your mouth and quickly melts into a light yet yummy dense, condensed milk flavor. So maybe they're sweet? I don't know. Sounds good to me. Um, the next thing I got is a juice, I think. Let's see what kind of juice it is. Um, oh, it doesn't say. Well, I mean, it's just a juice. I should be fine. Black currant juice drink. Ooh, that sounds good. Water, black currant. There is no grape skin extract. What the hell? So, there's no red dye in it, but it looks really good. Look how yummy that looks. Ah, I love grapes. 10 out of 10. I'm excited to eat that. Also, it's Halloween, so that's kind of why I ordered this, because I just really like trying different stuff. The next thing we got are these little cracker things, and I think these are... What are they called? Uh, oh my god, I don't remember. But I've had these before. We have them in a bunch of different Asian markets here, the Yan Yan chocolate creams. I think when my husband and I tried out a bunch of those snacks, this was one of the ones, because it has the what kind of animal questions on it. The next thing we got is a fudge bar, which this is, I think, the thing that I am most excited to eat. It is salted caramel. It's a brand from the Philippines, so that sounds yummy. I've never had Filipino candy before, or like snacks before. And then we have a little grab bag of a bunch of different candy in here as well. Let's see what we got. How's my camera doing on battery? Good. All right. So, the first thing we got is whatever this is. I don't even know what this is. Let us see. Um, this is corn soup flavor umaibo. U-M-A-I-B-O. I don't know what that is, but we're going to go ahead and try it. Oh, that looks really yummy. And then we got... Japanese grape roll-up candy, which also looks delicious. I don't, I'm not like the biggest fan of grape, but I do sometimes like it in candy. And then, 
Halloween Kit Kat caramel pudding flavored. Ooh. Um, I would definitely say that Kit Kat is easily one of my most favorite candies, honestly. All right, now we're gonna get to the manga. Because like I said, they send you three manga every single month. I don't know what these are. Oh, this one's mature, it's wrapped in plastic. So loud, so loud. All right, so the first one we got is Radiant by Tony Valente. This is evil creatures called nemesis fall from the skies and the only ones who can fight them are wizards, infected ones who survived a nemesis corruption. Seth, one of these survivors, vows not only to fight the nemesis but find their mythical nest Radiant and destroy it. Seth has big goals for defeating Nemesis, but first he must earn the trust of the very villagers he wants to protect. Not an easy task when those who use magic are just as feared as the Nemesis they fight. Even worse, Seth can barely control his monster's powers. It'll take more than brute strength, although it'll take that too to get Seth's quest out of the boonies and into the big time. Wow. Well, this is done by Viz, who I actually really like. What else did they do that I own? Oh, they did. So they did Tokyo Ghoul and they did that Blue, blue Sky Feeling. Those are the two that I own from Viz. So I actually really like their, uh, the like stories that they choose to represent. And the next one I have, which I have never heard of, is called the Voynich Hotel, I think is what it's called. You can check in anytime you like, but you can never leave. Well, I'm already okay with this because they have an Eagles reference. After a series of tra tragic events, Taizu decides to make a break with his past and go on vacation to the tiny island nation of Blefuscu. Little does he know that his hotel is a hotspot for contract killers, drug dealers, ghosts, and a coven of immortal witches. So much for rest and relaxation. So this is teen. Although it sounds kind of, I don't know, it sounds kind of interesting. We'll, we'll see if I like it or not, but whatever. What's this one rated? This one doesn't say, oh, rated T for teen. All right, now I'm gonna get into the mature one, um, which is actually kind of big too. It is called Toyo Game, T-O-H-Y-O, -O, One Black Ballot to You. Parental advisory, explicit content. What is in you that is explicit? Maybe it's violence. I don't know, you never know with manga. It could be like explicit violence, it could be explicit sex, like that manga that I accidentally bought that is completely explicit sex. Which I have not read yet, eventually I will. Let's see here. Um, the class popularity contest was supposed to be fun, but now the unpopular students are dying grisly deaths. The classroom has become a horrific struggle for survival. Someone is keeping the game going, but who? Can anyone come out alive and expose the truth? Oh, this is Yen Press. So Yen Press also did Sword Art Online. They did all of your name. So I own some stuff from them too, but let's see. Let's see what we got. I don't see any. Oh, no, there we go. Ooh. Oh my god. Yeah, definitely very gory. There are people like cut in half, and. I mean, there's not a whole lot of it. Oh, there's one with a kid who clearly jumped to his death. So, yeah, there's a bit of gore not gore it's kind of just like fuzzy where the people did it but like this girl's hanging herself so it's definitely more mature content so if you're sensitive about that kind of stuff you might not like it i am not so i don't mind getting something like that but yeah that is what i got in my manga spice cafe i might continue to do this because i like i said i've been looking for honestly when it comes to manga i just go and buy like the first first edition of some random ones and then see if i like them so this is kind of helpful for me because it is like somebody's doing that for me because i just don't have the time and since i don't really care when it comes to the first edition manga and buying them um it'll be kind of nice to have somebody else just buy it for me pick it out for me tell me what's hot but they also have like special edition crates too. I think the one that they have right now is for the new Sailor Moon, which I'm sad I didn't get on. But yeah, that's probably gonna be it for this vlog because I only have two days off, so I really just wanna go sit on my couch and do absolutely nothing for a little while. But what else is new? 
yeah I hope you guys enjoyed it I'm sorry it was all over the place my reading has just been shit this month honestly but I hope you guys enjoyed it anyway and I will see you guys in a video later this week let me know down below if the manga spice cafe is something that I should continue doing on my channel it's probably gonna be something that I continue to buy but let me know if it's something that you would like to continue to see but yeah that is it I will see you guys in my next video bye